laboratory tests say that the UK variant behaves very much like the original virus in terms of the ability of the people who've been immunized uh, to neutralize it. We do see some difference, not a, not a huge difference, but some difference in the ability to neutralize the South African variant. One thing that's really important to note, in our efficacy trial, we started to see protection between 12 and 14 days after the first shot. You don't get full protection until after the second shot, but you start to see protection after the first shot. So just because you see some drop in neutralization doesn't say we know that the vaccine won't work against that strain. In fact, chances are very good that it will work. Philip Dormitzer, Vice President and Chief Scientific Officer for Viral Vaccines at Pfizer, thank you for joining us. Oh, it's been my pleasure. WNYC is supported by the Mount Sinai Hospital, voted to Newsweek's World's Best Specialized Hospitals 2021. They were recognized in all categories, including number one for cardiology and gastroenterology in New York. Learn more at mountsinai.org. Showtime Documentary Films presenting Belushi. Director R.J. Cutler examines the too short life of John Belushi, an icon who changed culture and comedy forever. Awards eligible, now streaming at sho.com slash fyc. On the next Brian Lehrer Show, has the pandemic transformed the office forever? That's the title of a New Yorker article by John Seabrook this week. He'll join us to look for the best balance between remote work and the value of the physical workplace. Also, New York City Investigations Commissioner Margaret Garnett. How seriously is the mayor taking her findings about the NYPD? The Brian Lehrer Show at 10 a.m. on WNYC. 32 degrees right now in New York City. We're expecting mostly cloudy skies today, getting up to a high around 40 degrees. An example of how hard it can be to keep college costs way down. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Progressive Insurance with the Name Your Price tool, offering a range of coverage and price options to choose from. Now that's Progressive. More at Progressive.com or 1-800-PROGRESSIVE. And by C3.ai. C3.ai software enables organizations to use artificial intelligence at enterprise scale, solving previously unsolvable business problems. Learn more at C3.ai. I'm David Brancaccio. First, with people less out and about and fewer people with jobs and the ability to buy a $5 coffee, Starbucks says sales at comparable locations were down 5% from a year earlier. This is the October to December quarter, but Starbucks sales in China were up 5%. Marketplace's Mitchell Hartman reports. Serving up food and drinks has been one of the worst businesses to be in through the pandemic. And Mark Cohen at Columbia Business School says in that kind of business, only the strongest survive. Starbucks was a very successful business going into this crisis and will likely find a way through it. The companies offset the loss of walk-in, sit-down customers by expanding drive through online ordering and curbside pickup. Starbucks global reach is an asset too, says Tuna Amobi at CFRA Research. China and Asia Pacific actually much further along in the road to recovery compared to the U.S. and Europe. So I think that's helped Starbucks. And while Starbucks has the resources to weather the COVID slowdown, a lot of its coffee shop competitors don't, says Jim Hertel at Inmar Intelligence. Some of the smaller ones and the less nimble ones just aren't going to come back when this is over. Starbucks says it added 278 stores in the final months of last year. I'm Mitchell Hartman for Marketplace. Starbucks stock is down 2.6% pre-market. Walgreens has enticed Roz Brewer, the chief operating officer of Starbucks, to come over as CEO. Walgreens executive chairman praised Brewer for her expertise in operations, customer relations, talent development, and digital innovation. Brewer used to be president and CEO of Walmart's Sam's Club division. Now there will be one black woman chief executive officer of a Fortune 500 company. Dow and S&P futures are down in the five-tenths of one percent range. The Nasdaq future is up two-tenths percent. Pandemic has meant a shift to more remote computing in the cloud and lockdown people playing more video games, all this boosting Microsoft profits, up 17 percent from the same quarter a year before. The stock is up 2.9 percent in pre-market trading. 
Marketplace Morning Report is supported by GEP. GEP helps businesses build more resilient supply chains with strategy, managed services, and AI-based cloud-native software, including the GEP Smart Digital Procurement Platform and GEP Next, real-time supply chain visibility and management software, GEP.com. And by UKG, Ultimate Kronos Group offers HR solutions to connect modern workforces, UKG.com. Our purpose is people. And by Duolingo, a language learning app built around the idea that learning should be fun to keep learners motivated. Duolingo is available as an app for download. Now to one example of the lengths families will go to pay for a child's college education, or in this case, the lengths they'll go to save money on that education. This is the story of the Maryland family who lived in a donut hole. We make too much money to qualify for need-based aid and don't make enough money to pay full tuition at most universities, particularly private universities. We are what's called a donut hole family. Laura Mordenti Peralt and her husband worked out that they could afford to spend $500,000 combined to pay for college for all four kids. And that's the cost of all of them going to a state school in Maryland, plus some inflation, to account for higher costs when it's the younger one's turn. Laura's eldest is an ace, Ivy League material, perfect SAT math, near flawless GPA. Lots of leadership and volunteer work and all those things that those schools are looking for. The family set out to identify the campuses with the highest chances of getting a big, juicy merit scholarship, maybe even free tuition or a full, full ride. Laura finds a parents group on Facebook to gather intelligence. Another parent there had something. She had put this Excel spreadsheet together for her child that had a list of about 15, 20 universities that have full ride scholarships. So we started with those. Then lots of online searching, key words like full tuition scholarships or university fellows. Then there was the truckload of applications. Uh, over 30, and she wrote 90 essays. So, yeah, she was trying to keep up with her classes, keep her grades up. And so what was this? What, did you kick in maybe a couple hours a week helping to manage this? No, oh, this really became kind of like my full-time job. College visits, more time and money. But daughter and mother's work pays off. Acceptances pour in, including some with no charge tuition and some even offering full ride scholarships. New York Times money columnist Ron Lieber is author of the new book called The Price You Pay for College, which contains more of this family story. He says the homework isn't over at this stage. You want to know exactly what the rules are where this incredibly generous award could be taken away from you. So, you know, maybe if your grade point average falls below a certain point, will they allow you to take a year off if you want to? Are you kept from studying abroad? Are you forced to study abroad? And then, you know, there may be an opportunity to ask for a little more, right? Laura's daughter is happy at the school she was excited to choose, Tulane University in New Orleans. I think you should take their preferences into account as best as you can. Um, but it is also your job as the grown-up to explain ahead of time just how much decision-making authority you are willing to cede. And if your line to the child is, we have $20,000 to spend and we're willing to borrow $10,000 more and no more, um, then you have to be prepared for them to do anything they want with that budget if they manage to sort of win this extreme sport of merit aid acquisition. Laura Mordente Peralt acknowledges and Rod, uh, Ron Lieber concurs that getting a full merit scholarship and an elite school is harder than getting into one of the Ivies. There's more from Ron, including how to find hints about which colleges might be inclined to give big merit scholarships to the best students at Marketplace.org. Much will happen throughout the day on our Money, Markets, Workplace, Culture, and Innovation Beats. Listen for my colleague Kai Rizdal, host of Marketplace on many public radio stations, of course, or streaming at Marketplace.org. I'm David Brancaccio with our morning report from APM, American Public Media.